Hi, I'm Haley Thomas with PetraSkills, and I'm here with instructor David Patrick Murphy, known as Murphy, to discuss capillarity in rocks. Murphy, can you tell us how many days this course lasts and in what locations it's held in? Yes, Haley. This course is three days long. It's held in public offerings in Bogota, Calgary, Houston, Kuala Lumpur, and London or some other European venue. In addition, it's very popular for in-house offerings. We usually do five or six of those each year. Great. Can you tell me a little bit about the course? Yes, Haley. The course was originated in 1987 by Bertomir of Shell as an internal two-day Shell course. Uh, Bertomir was a protege of Gus Archie, the father of petrophysics. Bert taught the course inside Shell until 1993 when he passed away. Since then, I have taught it. In 2001, when Shell joined the PetroSkills Alliance, I started teaching it for PetroSkills, and at that time, I expanded it to three days, and it has proved to be a very popular PetroSkills course because it provides the foundation for a person to really understand the interrelationships of rock and fluid properties. Uh, this course is recommended for petrophysicists, reservoir engineers, and geological modelers. Can you tell me some of the topics that are covered in the course? Yes. We start out learning about surface phenomena related to capillarity. These include interfacial tension, which is a fluid-fluid interaction, and wettability, which is a fluid-solid interaction. We learn how saturation height functions relate to rock texture and fluid properties. In addition, we learn about the three different water levels in the reservoir. The free water level at capillary pressure equals zero. The 100% water level, which is the deepest depth of hydrocarbons in the reservoir, and the producing water level, a practical water level, the deepest that you produce negligible amounts of water. We learn about how to do laboratory measurements for cap pressure. These include mercury injection, porous plate, and centrifuge. And when you would want to do each one for your particular circumstances. We learn how to do quality assessment of the measurement, including correction of bad data and acquisition artifacts. We learn about the physics of the capillary model for interpretation. Interpretation of data, we learn how to do that in order for you to get what you need to know from the data. For example, maybe you want to know certain rock properties or you want to obtain a saturation height function. We learn how to assess if you have enough cap curve data to cover the full range of reservoir rock qualities and rock properties. And we look at different cap curve fitting models, including the Tomir model, the brooks corey lambda model, and the Skelt-Harrison model. And when you would want to use each one uh, in your work. We learn about capillary curve normalization using the Lever J model. Most of the course is spent looking at reservoir rocks. But when we talk about seal capacity, we look at the capillary pressure properties of the trap, the cap rock, the seal on top of the reservoir rock in order to estimate how tall of a hydrocarbon column the trap can hold underneath it without leaking. Now, a lot of the course deals with capillary held water. This is water that's physically held by the pore structure. But the course also covers estimation of clay bound water. This is electrically held water in the formation. And we use the Hill Shirley Klein model to do that. Uh, we learn how to estimate permeability from cap pressure data using several different models, including the Tomir air perm, 
the Swanson Air and Brine Perm, and the Winland Pittman Air Perm. And when you would want to use each of these different models. We create synthetic cap curves and estimate the permeability from a rock description, from a scanning electron microscope photo, or from a petrographic description using the Tomir cap pressure and perm models. During the course, each student builds a spreadsheet that uses the Tomir model for cap curve fitting so that they can derive saturation height functions, porosity, permeability, and other rock properties all from the cap curve data. Most importantly, the student can use their Tomir spreadsheet to model the interrelationships between the rock and fluid properties. This is key to building a realistic reservoir model. Thank you, Murphy. Um, of those topics that are covered, are there any that ever come as a surprise to the participants? Yeah, a, a couple come to mind. Uh, first, that there are interrelationships between the rock and fluid properties and the rock texture, and that these can be modeled. Second, as a side benefit to building their spreadsheet uh, to analyze and model cap curve data, they actually learn how to use Microsoft Excel better. Great. One last question. As a petrophysicist, reservoir engineer, or geological modeler, why would I want to take this course and how would it help me further my career? Um, of course, when you're finished the three days, you would be able to assess and fix bad cur cap curve data and then be able to use the cap curve data and interpret it for your reservoir model. But most importantly, the student will be able to model the interrelationships between the rock texture, the rock properties, and the fluid properties to be sure that the cap pressure info that goes into their reservoir model is internally self-consistent and actually represents the rocks that are in their reservoir. Great, thank you so much. My pleasure.